Where Riley Herbst ends up in 2025 has some fans outraged. <music> Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. Fans are furious, they're outraged. They are not happy, incensed even, that Riley Herbst is the favorite to land the third seat at 2311 Racing in 2025 with that third charter they are acquiring from the fire sale over at Stuart Haas Racing. Now, I know, fans are not happy about this. They want Corey Heim to be in the car. And honestly, I kind of thought this Riley Herbst news was pretty common knowledge at this point. I feel like we've been talking about this for two months now, at least in the Silly Season update videos, but Door Bumper Clear talked about it this week on their podcast, which reignited a whole other firestorm of people being absolutely furious, and as everybody continues to try to connect the dots on Silly Season doing the old Dennis Rodman click slide, put this over here. It's going uh click and go back this way, go over here, here, click and go that way. Type of situation. Of course, the third seat at 2311 Racing was going to come up, and Riley Herbst is expected to be the favorite to land over there. Now, fans don't want Riley there. They want Corey Heim to be in that car. And don't get me wrong, Corey Heim is definitely more talented than Riley Herbst. Corey Heim is a five-star prospect, a can't miss, the blue chip of blue chips. He's a guy that Toyota Racing Development, TRD, absolutely believes in 100%. And honestly, if they don't find a spot for him in 2026, they're, uh, risk, they're at risk of losing him to another manufacturer. Chevy will once again come in and pluck out you know, who they want and put him in one of their cars and probably be successful with them. But Riley Herbst right now, why is he the favorite to land over there? Well, he has a great B2B deal with Monster Energy. So his deal with Monster is a B2B deal between Monster and his family's line of gas station stores out on the West Coast, Terribles. That's how his car ends up having Monster on the hood. That's how he has Monster for every single race of the season, barring like one or two that he doesn't have it for. So that sponsorship expected to move over to 2311 Racing. But apparently this deal goes deeper than just sponsorship, at least financially. There's, from what I've heard, uh, some financial aspects that go to his family having a stake in that charter and helping 2311 Racing acquire that. So for 2311 Racing, this is a bit of a business deal. This is something to help set them up long term. If NASCAR limits everybody to three charters like we've been hearing in the charter negotiations, well, now they have their third charter. They're maxed out. They're set into the future. They'll do a few years with Riley Herbst and then maybe be able to take full control over that charter. Who knows how it's going to be set up at this point, but that would make the most logical sense, at least from a business standpoint. For Riley, he's a formidable race car driver, right? He's certainly not a guy that's going to contend for a NASCAR Cup Series championship. Is he going to be in contention week in and week out for race wins? No, absolutely not. Most weeks, he's probably not going to get out of the car what the car's capable of, but on certain weeks, he certainly will. He'll be a contender on, you know, plate tracks, maybe here and there on it on an intermediate, stuff like that. But in the Xfinity Series, he has like 160-ish starts in his Xfinity Series career, one win where he absolutely whacks the field last year at, at Las Vegas. And, you know, top 10s, top 5s, he has... A respectable amount for a guy that's in as competitive a car as he is. You probably like to see those numbers up maybe about 10% more than, than where they're at currently. He has an average start in his career of like 11.9, an average finish flirting around 15. You don't like to see a net negative there in terms of start versus finish. But like I said, he's a guy that can certainly get things done. Now, when you compare him to Corey Heim, Eh, that's just not really fair. Corey Heim, in his career, is the youngest driver to double-digit NASCAR Truck Series wins. He should have had a NASCAR Truck Series championship last year until he got Carson Hosevard in the championship race at Phoenix, but Carson felt really bad about it, so it's it's, it's unfortunate, but he, at least he felt bad, right? So for Heim, he should be a Truck Series champion if we didn't have a one-race winner-take-all, but we're not here to debate that. He has double-digit wins. He and Christian Neckes have absolutely set the Truck Series world on fire this year. Dare I say, in fuego at times, they've led 51% of the total laps this year in the Truck Series. Between the two of them, they're not Kyle Busch, they're Corey Heim and Christian Eckes. They're just that much better than everybody else right now. Heim, like I said, TRD thinks the world of this kid. Wow, where Riley Herbst has all the money from his family behind him with that B2B deal and everything else that goes along with it, Heim does not have that same amount of family money. He doesn't have that sponsorship backing that other drivers have. He's relying on Toyota Racing Development to find a spot to put him. That's how he ended up at Tricon Garage. That's why he's in the Safe Flight truck. That's why he goes over to Sam Hunt Racing and runs their Toyotas over there. He's not going to end up at Joe Gibbs Racing by the sounds of anything. Not in the Xfinity Series, not in the Cup Series. He and uh, little Ty Joffrey Gibbs just don't get along too well. That's what it sounds like. Who knows? Maybe they could eventually come around. I saw Noah Gragson and Ty Gibbs hanging out, you know, chopping it up last week. So things can change. They can certainly change. 
So maybe they will change down the road. But for the most part, it doesn't seem like Heim's going over there. So for Toyota, they're going to have to find a place to put him at eventually. And 2026 is going to be that time. Because if they don't, they are going to risk losing him. He's going to jump ship. Think of Jesse Love jumping ship from the TRD stable. Think about William Byron and others that have all left the TRD stable to move on to go elsewhere. And TRD does love to hold on to their prospects that they really, really like. Eric Jones, Kurt Rebell, perfect examples of that. Ty Gibbs, of course, he was never going anywhere else. But TRD, you know, thought very highly of him as well. For Heim... TRD is going to have to find a spot to put him. Now, he could have been in play at Legacy Motor Club this year, right? Eric Jones is not signed for 2025 and beyond, but I think Heim maybe looked at what John Hunter Nemechek did and was like, I don't necessarily want that. John Hunter Nemechek running in the Cup Series at front row, decides to take a step back, go run the Truck Series at Kyle Busch Motorsports, wins some races down there, moves up to the Xfinity Series with Joe Gibbs Racing, wins a bunch of races there, moves back up to the Cup Series with Legacy Motor Club, and is essentially right back to where he left at front row, just not contending for wins and running in the mid back portion of the field and I think Heim kind of saw that and was like ah, I'm not going to do that going to wait out and see if something better comes along in 2026 what could that be ah, it remains to be seen right now right we're going to get a new Toyota Xfinity Series team or are they going to make up with Joe Gibbs Racing or find a spot to put him over there 2311 going to drop one of their drivers who knows at this point but it all indications point to Riley Herbst being that third driver over at 2311 Racing next year and I know some fans are not going to be happy about it. Is it the best signing ever? Is it who you want to be in that car? No, but we've certainly seen worse drivers end up in that in the Cup Series uh, before. He's certainly better than anything Starcom ever trotted out. He's better than what the most of the Rick Ware stuff that we've seen. He's certainly better than Cody Ware. He's not going to be a guy that's going to be in the way. He's not going to be seconds off the pace. He's not going to be a uh, moving roadblock. In his races for Rick Ware Racing, he's actually looked relatively formidable at times. Like I said, he's a guy that can definitely contend on, on drafting tracks. I mean, heck, last year, I think it was Talladega. He looked really strong and ran up front for a decent portion of the day. So for Riley, it's going to be a great opportunity for him. And maybe he can, you know, make turn all the doubters, all the naysayers into people that are like, okay, eat their words a little bit. Is he going, like I said, is he going to contend for championships? No, absolutely not. So let me know in the comments what you think about Riley being the favorite to land over at 2311 Racing. Like and subscribe to the to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.